congratulations to everyone here for attending this event. Um, let's also thank Mimi and Sevberg for putting this together. And also, I'd like to give another hand to everyone who's spoken today and at the previous events. Uh, just there's been a lot of brave people come up and, and share their life stories and, and, and share their voices that a lot of us haven't had a chance to hear before. So you should all congratulate yourselves on, on expressing yourselves. <laughs> Women have more of an opportunity now to express yourselves than ever before. This is especially true in Hollywood. Uh, hashtag Me Too is a part of it for sure, but that is a symptom of a larger uh, opportunity. It's a movement. It's, it, we're witnessing greater protections for individuals. We're also witnessing greater opportunities, uh, both in front of and behind the camera. Does anyone here watch the end credits after a movie? Bunch of people. Okay, cool. There's a lot of opportunities here in basically every specialization. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of people that work on individual movies. There's PR, there's writers, there's producers, directors, editors, hair and makeup, costume, there's special effects. Even if you've just started a, a business, if you're an entrepreneur, there is an opportunity to uh, make headway into the entertainment industry, not necessarily for films, but for TV. There's a lot of local production and uh, there's a lot more web production on now than there ever has been before. So um, if you want to be in the industry, they will have you. There are currently 51% of all movie viewers are female, but only 12% of movie makers are female. Uh, and to me, that means there's a huge portion of human stories that are not being filmed. A lot of the stories I've heard today and last week at the, at the talks these, these stories have never been filmed before. Instead, we get, you know, white guys shooting white guys, part 16. And <laughs> I think we can do better. <laughs> um, I think there's a gold mine of, unoriginal story, of, of original stories out there. They're lurking unexpressed in your minds. There's not just ideas and emotions. Um, there's also, there's ideas that will help men better empathize and understand with women. This is an opportunity to help our society progress by, all, by us all communicating and underst understanding a little bit better. Here's a breakdown on the three key positions, writers, directors, and producers, over the last 10 years. The numbers are a little higher on uh, TV staff writing. It's about 39% female now. Um, and if we were to look at a 2% increase annually, it'll take 10 to 20 years to reach equality. So while we're looking at creating a bunch of new jobs and new writing positions, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take jobs away from people like me. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for people like you to tell your stories and people like me to tell my stories. Hollywood's motivation to enable your voices is not just to avoid lawsuits. Um, and it should also not be viewed as a feminization of Hollywood. It should be viewed as an expansion and inclusion. We're getting access to more human stories than we've ever had before. Um, they are going to be of greater depth and understanding, and they're going to appeal to more people around the world. Every major studio and network is now making an effort to develop female and minority voices. You can just Google your favorite network and diversity outreach, and you'll find out what their program is. You can also look at every one of these headlines, and they're all within the last 12 months. This is all happening right now. This is a crest. It is a wave, and they are inviting you to, work, to ride it with them. Beyond just the networks, there are also opportunities for female filmmakers who have not yet reached that professional status. There are lots of festivals and uh, grants. There are uh, initiatives in Sundance Institute and New York Film Institute. Basically, every Film Institute is making an effort to develop your voices right now. Women are running studios. Women are making war films. This is the first generation in which the people who are running the studios have not been brainwashed by that old school 20th century mentality. This is an opportunity for you to express your abstract thoughts and ideas to a market that's not only never heard them before, but they've never actually thought to ask before. Now they're asking. Every one of these networks is spending huge amounts of money to cater to every market segment imaginable. 
And if you've got stories to tell, that means there are other women out there who want to see your stories on screen. So if you can figure out how to express your stories in a way that Hollywood wants them, there's a great chance that your stories are going to get out there. We're going to talk about some tools here to express yourself. These can be applied to novels, short stories, poetry, really any character-based narrative that suits you. Um, but today we're going to talk specifically about screenplay just because I'm a nerd about that. Um, I know some people have seen this format. Has anyone not seen it before? Okay. It's, it's a very standard way of, of expressing a movie where you can show one page in one minute. You can get through a whole document of 100, 120 pages in about two hours. It's a very standard format. And if you talk to anyone in Hollywood, their expression is, give me the same thing, only different. Anyone heard that before? Anyone know what it means? It means they want your ideas, but they want it told in a very specific way. Not just the format here, but there's a, there's a lot of layers in how it's supposed to uh, speak to the people who are going to read and make your film. Who here has written a screenplay before? I know Stephanie has. Anyone had one produced before? How many? Okay, great. So you've, you, you've been around. It's a very highly competitive industry. Stephanie's had eight movies produced, which is incredible. Less than 1% of all scripts ever written get produced. Um, I think what she's achieved in her lifetime is just, it's more than I've done, and I, I, we sh we, she deserves a, a round for that. Um, if you're serious about writing as a career, you need to make your script the best it can possibly be. Um, so what I've done is I've created a blueprint called the Method Screenwriting. Uh, my manager, Mimi, is currently shopping this to publishers. And this is a way to bring your ideas onto paper in a way that the industry wants to read them. The words move and emote come from the same word. So it makes sense that the movies that, that affect us the most, the movies that inspire us to become filmmakers ourselves, are the ones that move us emotionally. When you're creating a movie, you think about those moments that, that affect you or that you want to affect other people, and you think about the filler that needs to go between those, those scenes, and then you sit down to write fade in all the way to fade out. And that process can take months. Um, the problem with that, it's like building a car paint job first. After you put the paint on, it's difficult to then put the engine in. So method screenwriting takes the approach of building from the bottom up, constructing it in order. Um, and that means dialogue is very last. Like the, the part that we all hear and that we love the most, it's really an, it's an effect of everything else that's done before that rather than the impetus. So let's look at those thousands of details, which we're not all going to discuss right now, but let's just figure out why we want to write method. Does anyone know what method acting is? Okay. Can you define it? Um, probably not as well as you. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I, I looked it up. Um, it's, it's a way for actors to inhabit their characters to portray the most authentic emotional experience. Character actors do not want info dump. They don't want to recite information that gets an audience through a plot from A to Z. They want to inhabit a character. That's what method acting is, and as soon as you can write for method actors, your scripts will be received a lot more. All good modern acting is method acting. There is no way to get 21 Oscar nominations if you're not a method actor. There's just no other way to do it. Um, and you notice that this is the same person and the same actor in all these photos, but they're all different characters. And she spends time getting into every single one of these. Even though you're only seeing her on screen for two hours, there might be months and months of prep where she is getting into the mindset of that character. With method uh, screenwriting, our goal is going to be to put that method into all of your characters of your story. So you can think of this as a toolkit or a loom on which to weave whatever masterpiece you want. Um, I like this little metro map I put together. We're going to go through these stages in a little more detail. But it's basically showing how you're going to use a standard structure to paint whatever colorful picture you want. The first step, oh by the way, this is, I want to thank Manhattan. This graphic wouldn't have existed if it weren't for my last trip here. 
I met four other guys named Josh Cohen. We all saw the other Josh Cohen off Broadway. <laughs> and I came up with this graphic that I put in the, the book as a result of it. Um, so, method, step one, theme. This is the reason you are writing. It's your thesis. It's the, it's the reason you're investing months of your life writing this as opposed to another script or as opposed to nothing at all. It's, it should be the one thing that your audience takes away and remembers after you've written, after they've watched your content years later, this is the one thing they remember. The next thing you're going to do is interview all of your characters, getting to know personal life, public life, and private life. You want to know where they came from. You want to know how their society, how their environments influence them. We talked about some things being out of our control, some things being in our control. Basically, everything that anyone has spoken about today can be put into one of these interviews. You look at the five Josh Cohens up there. We're a member of the Josh Cohen Club on Facebook. We've got over 70 Josh Cohens. Okay? If we've all got the same name and all theoretically similar ethnic background, but we're all different people, we could all fill out these interviews separately and we'll all come up with unique characters. Step three is going to be to compare them. So you're going to look at a single question and then look at everyone's answers at once and you're going to compare them. And if any two characters have given you similar or identical answers, you change them. So now you've got 60 points, and by the way, it doesn't have to be 60, you could do 40 or 100, whatever. I'll give you my 60 in a download and then you can customize away. Um, but then you also want to compare so that every single, every single character is unique in every respect. So now you've not only got three-dimensional real people with you know, depth and uniqueness and, and all these interesting conundrums that people have because we're all just weird people. We're not straight co cookie cutter cardboard cutouts. We are, we are three-dimensional. We are character driven. We have thousands of details. You don't have to do a full character from scratch. You could do 10 answers based on someone you know and 50 that you make up. Or you could make them up all or you could put individual characters in different stories. Your goal is to have real three-dimensional people that you can put into any story you want, not just the one you sat down to write. You're then going to create a relationship matrix where you're going to say what each character thinks of all the others. Most screenplays fail because they put too much expository dialogue or on-the-nose dialogue in there. It's, it's people talking about themselves, providing answers from those interviews, or saying what they think about other people, what they think about situations. These, are, these spreadsheets are cheat sheets for you as your writer. You are the goddess of your little literary world, but these answers are never going to show up on screen. These are just, these are guides so that you know what to write, you know what your characters will think and say and do in each situation. So that when you actually sit down to write the actual script, there's no question of what happens next or what would this character do because you already know. Step five is a hero's journey plot. Anyone heard of the hero's journey before? Okay, it's, it's a standard story structure. There's anywhere from nine to 13 steps, depending on what, what uh, authority you look at. And you want to run every one of your characters through that journey. Not just your lead, not just your supporting, but do it for eight, 10, however many major characters you have. Villains, when they're not tormenting heroes, they still have to pay their bills and, you know, they go to the bathroom and they take care of their families and they do the best they can. We just don't get to see most of those scenes in most movies. But if you're creating this narrative, you need to know every step of every one of their journeys. And then step six is you're going to pick out the spots that should appear on screen because those are the only, story, only parts of the story you need to tell your story from A to Z. Everything else can be let go. It's not important to your core theme. You're going to take those ideas, you're going to put them into a synopsis. That could be a short story of one to five pages. It could be a poem, an outline, note, note cards, whatever you're comfortable with. You just want to get your entire story out in a couple of pages with no dialogue. You can use photos if you want for reference. You can use colors, music, whatever you need to for yourself. Um, but this, is, this should not include any dialogue at this stage. The next step is going to be silent film script, which is kind of an odd step. Most people say, but I'm writing a talking movie about 
people telling jokes. Okay. Um, all cinema started silently. It was silent for 30 years, and some of the best movies are still silent. Film is a visual medium. If you can get your entire story out as a, sh a silent script, you can tell your story visually, you can let your audience connect to your method actors emotionally, and you don't have to worry about any expository dialogue, you don't have to worry about translating anything subtitled, it's just a question of watching a moving image, which is what a movie is. Finally, after you have a story that can stand on its own with no dialogue, at that point then you decorate it with your character-driven dialogue. If you think of a cake, you can put a little bit of icing on it, make it a lot, or you can put tons and tons of icing on it and just make it uneatable, unedible. Um, but when you have the cake already built, it's already baked, you already know the shape, you're just direct decorating it the way you want to, the way your characters are telling you to direct decorate it, rather than relying on characters to, to bring your audience through a story. So you can go from your, you can take your concept to a completed rough draft in 50 to 100 hours, which if you're a working writer, it could be a week or two. If you're a, a single mom with multiple jobs, that could be a month or two. But it is possible. If you have an idea that you've always thought would be a great screenplay, a great movie, you have the ability to write this now in your spare time. But you're only about one third of the way done. Most people, when they sit down to write, they try to get the entire thing done at once. They start at fade in, go all the way to fade out. That draft can take months, and then the second draft takes months, and then the third draft takes months. With method screenwriting, we want to get the first one out in 50 to 100 hours, and then we want to knock out each revision in a day or two. And that may sound fast-paced, but we're going to focus on just one aspect with each revision. You want to make the thing clearer. You want to check each character for depth and consistency and uniqueness of voice. Check for tone. Check for rhythm. Check for whether your, your favorite actor would enjoy playing the role, whether their agent would approve it, whether your, your favorite actor's daughter would approve of seeing this role on screen in 20 years. You want to, you want to channel every single person who's going to read your script and make a decision on it, even after it's made. You don't want people complaining about it on IMDb, as I've had before. So just handle their objections beforehand. You go through each draft from each reader's perspective, and you make it 10% better each time. You may never reach perfect. Um, but the writers who get to 99% perfect are the ones who, who really get noticed. They really start to uh, build a career out of it. Um, so there's no guarantee. Oh, what happened there? There it is. There's no guarantee that your first attempt will be good. It's getting an Oscar on your first screenplay is about a one in a million shot. Um, but your second or your third or your fifth might be. So if there's a story you're passionate about, you might want to practice on a story you don't care about as much, something you just make up, and then come back to your passion project once you feel that you can make it the best it can possibly be. So I hope this roadmap has been helpful. You can download the slideshow and a template of the spreadsheet on methodscreenwriting.com or coincidence.com slash method. And uh, you can also email me, josh at coincidence.com, if you have any questions. I am curious to hear how you use the method. If you're using it for novels or short stories or something I didn't intend, please let me know how it works. If you've got different interview questions that you think would be better in the book than I've been able to come up with, please share me what your, what your interview questions are because obviously your perspective is going to be different from mine. Um, so thank you again for your time, and we'll see you on the red carpet.